You're watching Sports Beat. Escapes another. He will take off. Get up in the air and stay on his feet. Oh, my goodness. Rumble, young man, rumble. The wait is almost over. The college football season is almost one month away. We begin our college football preview series with a look at the 2019 BYU Cougars. Yeah, for the next half hour, we bring you an in-depth preview of the BYU offense and the defense. The Cougars have a quarterback. We break down the rise of Zach Wilson, and we give our predictions for a season, as well as a highlight video to get you hyped up for this upcoming season. We have to start with game one, right? Oh, big We're time. taking things one <laughs> game at a time here, as every coach will say. It just so happens that the next game is the rivalry game. It's been almost 10 years since Max Hall connected with Andrew George for a touchdown in overtime, giving the Cougars their last win over Utah. Can't believe it's been that long. But since then, the Utes, they've dominated the rivalry, winning eight straight games in this series. This BYU team determined, though, to end that streak, and they haven't shied away from saying so. so it's tooth and claw. It's the Utah-BYU game. This, it's, it's a fight to the finish. You know, it's one of the best rivalries in college football. I think it could be something that's overlooked, um, you know, with the, with the Michigans and Ohio States and, uh, you know, the Alabama Auburns, but, but, but this one's right up there. I'm pumped. I'm so excited. I've been preparing for it for a year already. Dukes back to the right. Play fake. Wilson on the seam. Caught by Bushman. 10-5. Touchdown, Cougars! I don't want to be like the last guys who were here for four years that never beat those guys, so, you know, I want to get three straight. I've been thinking about it ever since the game. You know, I just felt like I, I give them a lot of credit for coming back, but I also feel like there's a part of the game that, that we left out there. Shotgun snap to Zach. Climbs the pocket, goes down, sack. We're ready. It's, it's been a long time coming. Straight up, they've had it on us the past seven years, and like, it's, it's, we're sick of it. I'm sick of it. I think our team is sick of it. Our coaches are sick of it. It means more to me. Uh, I take it personal. Quick throw outside, intercepted. Picked off to the outside, Julian Blackman. Five, four, three, two, one, touchdown! And when Utah acts like it's no big deal, but I know, I know that they prepare for this game and they and they and they approach it like it's, you know, something bigger than it is. And you know, you can't let guys like that go talk on Twitter because you know we can't we can't step down and let them do stuff like that. Literally every breakdown we have at practice when we're at workouts is beat Utah, beat Utah on three, beat Utah. We're just ready. It's, it's time. We are ready for this and we're getting eager for it. We've been counting down since like 201 days. That's going to be a tough task because this is arguably the best Utah team ever. I know that Kyle will have that, that team ready. It's, if, if guys aren't passionate about this game coming up, I don't know what they're working out this offseason for. Since I've been at BYU, we've beat Utah. We're so motivated because we know we can compete with anybody. We were left with that bad taste for the entire year. It's been too long. Like it's no secret. Like we all want to get that win. If the game was tomorrow, I'd be ready. If you see what's happening within the program, the culture shift, the belief, the buy-in, believe in what we're doing, believe in the message that Kalani's preaching, believe that we can win these games, and that's that's the chip we have on our shoulder. Like, and if I mean, people can say what they want, but there's a, I mean, guys are pissed off. The Utah game is the first of four straight games against P5 opponents to open the season. The schedule features a trip to Neyland Stadium to take on Tennessee in front of 102,000 fans. What an atmosphere. USC and Washington, they're going to be at home. Not to mention tough games against Boise State, Utah State, Toledo, and South Florida. BYU is used to this, though. It's life as an independent, and Kalani Sintaki, he embraces this challenge. Man, I'm, I'm so excited for it. That's, like I said, what when I got the job, even before I was looking at the schedule and the type of teams that they're, they're lining up, and I, I told Tom, keep them coming, anyone, anytime, anywhere, and uh, I like that. Yeah, if you want if you want to be the best, you, you got to start competing with the best to see where you're at. First and foremost, that challenge, oof, it's going to be big. It's just how it works, you want to be the best. And so, it's just, I wouldn't have it any other way, to be honest, like, that's who we want to play. We want to play the big teams. Oh, it's incredible. The, our schedule is, is one of the toughest in college football. Playing those teams like Washington, still, I didn't get an opportunity to play Washington because I was hurt last year. And just teams like that, Washington, Utah, Tennessee, that's just a way for us to prove ourselves. You want the best teams to play against.
you know, it's going to be a good year for us. I think this win doesn't mean anything to Kalani Sataki or Tanner Mangum. That reaction should tell you exactly what this meant. When I was a player, I would have loved the schedule. You know, I, I remember playing Notre Dame in 94. I remember playing Alabama in 98. I remember playing those, those big time games and ASU and all those games that we got we to experience. And these guys get. What I got in, in, in four years of playing, they get in one year. The play gets off. It's head left. No good. Uh, you know, after just looking at Wisconsin last year, I want, everyone on that team wants to have that feeling again. And, you know, to have the opportunity to have that feeling maybe four or five, six times during the season, that's something we look forward to and want to, want to achieve. You know, especially in the first four games, pretty, pretty good teams that we'll be playing, but we, are, we ourselves are a good team. And we want to show that. We know we can compete with them. And, uh, you know, if we want to make a New Year's Six Bowl, this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to compete with them. We're going to have to win those games. Canada walks in, touchdown Cougars. And so imagine the guys get to play four years with those type of schedules, those type of memories. We beat Wisconsin last year. That was a cool memory for a lot of guys beating Arizona last year. And we just like to have those memories and make them more consistent. Ooh, that schedule is daunting. The Cougars face that challenge with confidence because of the quarterback they have under center. Zach Wilson earned that confidence as a freshman, and more is expected in 2019. The last time we saw him, he was perfect in the bowl game. That bowl win against Western Michigan. Zach Wilson plans to pick up right where he left off. I knew him when he was a, a kid, you know, at, at, our, at the camps when I was at Utah, and got, got to see him compete at a young age. I thought there was something unique about him at that age. Having him back there and having the confidence that he's going to do his job as long as we do ours, knowing that he'll be successful, that, that builds a lot of confidence for us. Zach, you know, Zach's been somebody I've been impressed with since, since he came in, since he enrolled early. It's confidence. He's very confident. He plays with a lot of confidence, and the confidence that he plays with, it rubs off on, on our offense. He had these really big-time goals. Of, one was starting as a true freshman, having that opportunity. He's going to grow, you know, just exponentially as he gets older, and I, I think that's really awesome. His preparation is what makes him so confident. He, he watched film like he was going to take the first snap. He, he practiced like he was going to play that, play that week. When me and him weren't playing spring ball and I was sitting behind him while we were watching our offense go one-on-ones with our Ds, he's going through pre-snap reads and pre-snap coverages and, and where we should go with the ball. And when the, ball, when the play was snapped, Everything he said was true. He's performed. He's gone out there on the field and he's done it. And he's been in the battle. He's been in the huddle with them and they've seen how he's responded and they, they see the look in his eye and they believe in him. It's like I have this a confidence that I, I built up over that amount of time. It's just like, okay, well, I can do this. Like I've, I've played, I know what it's about. I know what it's like. Um, I still have so much I can learn, but I know that I, it's something I can, I can fulfill for sure. So I'm just excited to go into this next year with you know, the ability to take that next step. So you've been doing your homework? I have been. What are some of those things? Because the fans don't see that. Yeah. They don't know what you're doing behind the scenes. What are you mm -hmm. doing behind the scenes mentally to become a better quarterback? Yeah, I'm just watching you know, tons of pro guys. Um, some of my favorite guys like Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Drew Brees. Um, I watch some of the Jared Goff stuff because he's a young quarterback as well. Um, and I don't want to pick up the stuff that comes when you become a vet, stuff that becomes when you're an NFL guy, but just you know how they, how they work inside the pocket. Um, a lot of the route combinations are the same kind of thing, and I love to see, you know, what things they're throwing against certain kind of defenses, how they're manipulating defenders, their pocket presence, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, of course, watching tons of Utah film, just going back and trying to find those tiny details that maybe didn't stand out to me the first time I prepared for only a week. And I want to take my game to a whole nother level mentally. And because I can't do anything physically, I've made a, you know, made a stand for myself that I really want to approach that like two times more than I would have ever done it before and just make sure I'm always on the film and make sure I'm always learning and, and trying to grow my mental game. Up next, we'll break down the offense Zach will be leading this fall. What will we see from Jeff Grimes in season two as offensive coordinator? Like we're capable of big things. You know, one of those teams that are just fun to watch on TV. Will a featured back step up? And will the wide receivers be more productive in 2019? Be a, a disappointment, you know, to lose a game. 
really. It just, I mean, if they even give up any points, it would be disappointing. And what about the other side of the ball? Can the Cougar defense stand strong against some of the best in the nation? A closer look at that side of the ball next. It's year two of the Jeff Grimes offensive era at BYU. We know the Cougs have given the wheel to his sophomore quarterback this season, but of course, it'll take more than Zach Wilson to score touchdowns this fall. The offensive line, they'll have to play big in the trenches. Guys like Aleva Hifo and Matt Bushman need to be playmakers on this team, and the run game must bring balance with Lopini Katoa leading the charge. You know, I think we showed last year that we can play with anybody when we play well, but we also showed that there's still a lot of room for growth at other moments. Zach goes deep down the far sideline. He's got a man, and it is Capelanihifo. Like we're capable of big things. I expect us to score more points, create big plays, and put up points. You know, one of those teams that are just fun to watch on TV. Goes for the back right pylon of the end zone. He's got a touchdown to Neil Pau. We'll be faster. We'll play with more confidence. I think we can be one of those teams that super high tempo and just score super, super fast with big explosive plays. Quite honestly, something that we need is we just need more explosive plays. That's a backwards pass. It's a trick play. It is set up wide open into the end zone. You don't see a lot of teams succeed and score a lot of points without some big plays. And Catilla goes left and down the left sidelines. The offensive line. Have you been able to see it come together the way you want it to? I'm seeing them come together. I would stop short of saying the way that I want it to yet. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's got a high expectation of this offensive line, and that comes from him being, of course, an O-line coach back in the day. You know, he, he has a high set standard for us, and he wants us to perform the best of our ability. He, he puts that responsibility on our backs knowing, you know, that we can handle it, and, you know, that's, that's a good thing to have. Last year, you know, they played pretty well, but they were that group that played pretty well for a bunch of young guys. Now they need to just go play like a really good line and, and that, that excuse of youth is removed. If they'll do that, then, then our offense will, will take off. Gives to Lopini, oh, Lopini <laughs> right up the middle and right into the end zone. You got a lot of guys, but we don't know if there's a guy that can step up and be that three down back. I, I always wanted there to be a guy who steps up and, and forces me to say, hey, I can't take him out until he's tired. They run right. Oh, with the Lopini Katoa and right into the end zone. Are you ready to make a case that you're the guy that can handle that responsibility? For sure, that's, I think that's all of our goals. And last year, it was a pretty similar situation for me. I feel like nobody really knew like what was gonna happen. And uh, so it just motivated me to work harder. So that's doing the same thing this year for sure. Looking for Simon, makes the grab inside the Arizona 15. From an outside perspective, we've kind of been labeled as the least productive group. And, and I feel like that's kind of fair. Um, that's, that's something that we need, definitely need to work on. We have a really good receiving core. If someone emerges as a great individual player, then, then that'll be even better. Um, but I, I really felt like throughout the spring from day one to day 15, they probably had the best spring, the best performance of any position on the offense. We lost some close games last year that literally came down to the last play or last possession of the game. And we've been talking about what it takes to finish those games. And, you know, there's, there's going to be some close games this year, too, and we've got to find a way to pull those out. The offense will once again get plenty of help from BYU's stingy defense. Last year, they held opponents to just 21 points per game. And with eight starters returning, expectations are high for this group. If they can find an adequate replacement for Sione Takitaki, the Cougars, who ranked 18th in the nation in total defense last year, could be even better. What are your expectations for this group this year? I think it's just dominant, tough on defense. Even better than last year. I think we're just ready to, to ready to roll. He's dropped by Trajan Peely. This defense has been working hard. Uh, we lost uh, a lot of good players. We have uh, guys to, to back it up, like kind of a next man mentality. We have a lot of guys that are willing to step up, and I, I expect even better, bigger things from the defense. Do to compete and like next man up should be play at that same level instead of dropping down, because that's one thing our team in general struggles with, is once a starter gets hurt, the depth goes way down. Everyone's on the same page. You're like, Either you're going to lift weights and get stronger, or you're going to fall behind. An opportunity for some guys to step up. They know what's expected in those positions. And um, I just feel like we've got a lot of depth. Talent's one thing, but getting them to gel together and to be around each other, I think allowing the new leaders to take over with, with the loss of Shiro Takitaki and Corbin Kafusi, allowing other guys to step, to step into those roles. Um, I've been really pleased with what I've seen. We have guys that are very technical sound 
and I have never seen any people work as hard as they do. They've gotten stronger, they've gotten faster, and they've only gotten better. Everybody talks about it, it all starts up front. I think we've got a good D-line, a deep D-line, and uh, we've got a good lot, lot of young backers that I think are, are will, will be coming into their own during this fall camp that we're excited about. And, uh, We've got, we've got a lot of secondary kids that are coming back as well that we're going to be excited about. To see the leadership that has taken place and the ownership to, to understand what we have to do as a unit to create such a great defense has been, has been an amazing thing to see, and these guys are taking ownership for it. Kind of been built up, you know, the last couple of years. Um, coming from the 4-9 and nine season, we were really disappointed. Um, to last year, we were still kind of disappointed, right? I think we could have played a lot better. And now I think we're just ready to roll. Guys that really just want to be the best D-line in the nation. You know, that, that's our goal. That there's nothing less than that that we want to achieve. And the formula is kind of set for us to really be competitive and uh, have a good showing in all the games that we've had and uh, that we've gotten, even though we've got a lot of good, tough games. I, you know, I'm really excited about it and all the boys are up for the challenge. As long as we're technical sound, listen to coaches, do our assignment, uh, and be disciplined, we're, we're a very good defense be a, a disappointment you know to lose a game really it just I mean to even give up any points it would be disappointing we broke down the offense and the defense now it's time to show you what it could all look like this fall on the field yeah it's time for some eye candy our 2019 BYU football hype video loaded and ready to roll don't miss it next Welcome back. BYU returned 17 starters in 2019, nine on offense and eight on defense. The experience so many young players earned the past two seasons could pay off this fall. Yeah, here's a sample of what you can expect to see from the Cougars on the field this season. It's our 2019 BYU football hype video. Bushman, touchdown Cougars! And right into the end zone! Oh, pressure comes from Taki Taki, finished off. Isaiah Kafusi shooting in and throwing down. He's got Gunnar Romney, he's got a touchdown! Set up wide, open into the end zone. Lalulu Patuta got by the defense. Skitoa, up the middle he goes, and another score is dropped by Trajan Peely. Bushman got it with one hand. Top Allen Hebo. Derek Clark lost the handle, and this may be the spark BYU needed. And right into the end zone. And a hurdle and shoved out of bounds. 10 5 inside the sideline, and the pilot picked off. Trying to spot Laird, and it's intercepted. Oh, throw intercepted. Back keeper. Get there. Isaiah Kafusi wraps up and hauls down. Toss back to Gawalaku. It's Diane Gawalaku into the end zone. 20, 50, 10, he's going in. Touchdown, Alonahipo. Nini Katoa, Katoa keeps the legs driving. Stretches all over the goal line. Bushman, Bushman sheds the tackler at midfield. 45 40. Collapse on him, and he goes down. Three Cougars around him. To the end zone, has Shumway there, makes the leap, and does he come down with it? Yes, he does! Touchdown! Dex Milne. Katoa, a big yet, another one! Wide open. And it's Talon Shumway. 20, 50, 10, oh, he's gonna go! Five touchdown Cougars! How do you think the Cougs will do in 2019? We'll pick our winners from every game coming up next. 
Welcome back. It's time now for us to share how we think the Cougars will do this season. Last year, I predicted a 4-8 record. A lot of BYU fans weren't happy. <laughs> the Cougars, though, stunned Arizona and Wisconsin on the road and proved me wrong. Yeah, well, BYU, that we know they like to schedule things pretty tough. And when you schedule tough opponents, there's a chance you're probably going to lose a few games along the road. So let's do it. Let's make our picks for 2019 season, for better or worse here. Uh, we'll start off with me. I've got BYU starting the season 1-3, and three, the one win, that September 14 home game against USC. I have them winning seven of their final eight, though, finishing strong, including wins over Boise State and San Diego State. The loss, though, at Utah State and Logan, November 2nd. This would be their third straight season with a loss against the Aggies. They haven't done that since the uh, early 70s. So that's what I've done. I, I had a tough time with that San Diego State game at the end yeah. of the year, but I went with the win there. So That is a tough one to call. But I'm, So BYU is the only team in the country to open the season with four P5 opponents. That's tough. Let's be honest. But yeah. did you know BYU has 25 wins over P5 teams since 2003? So the most of any non-P5 team. I think, like you, they're going to beat USC for the first time in program history. But I think they're going to start one and four. That Toledo game is going to be tough yeah. coming off of that Washington game. Back, I think they'll bounce back nicely with wins over South Florida and Boise State. I think they beat the yes. Broncos this year. They're going to lose to the Aggies and Logan, I think because Utah State's really good, but they'll close out with four straight wins, including a roadie over the Aztecs. I think they get the Aztecs. That would be 7-5, followed by a win in the Hawaii Bowl. But I could see a path where if they beat Utah State, mm -hmm. they beat Toledo. This is a nine-win team this year. Nine and three, well, plus a be. bowl win. That'd be a good year for BYU. You know, I got them in four. You got them seven and five. But like you said, they very well could be a nine-win uh, team this season. Nine wins there, and if they could pull off another one of those in P5 bowl, wins, yeah. a 10-win season would be pretty nice it for would BYU. Be. All yeah. right. You know what? It's almost here. That was fun. It was. College football season is almost here. I hope you enjoyed this. Enjoy the college football season, BYU fans. Thanks for watching.